Most oxygen is transported to the tissues bound to hemoglobin within red blood cells because of the high affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Only a small fraction of the total is freely dissolved in the plasma. But when we measure PaO2, we're actually measuring that dissolved oxygen. A normal PaO2 while breathing air at sea level varies by age. Young adults should be around 90 to 100 millimeters of mercury, whereas older adults should be around 75 to 85. And measuring the PaO2 is actually considered the most reliable method for determining the adequacy of blood oxygenation. Now, in order to measure it, you need to get an arterial sample of blood. And once you have that sample, it can also be used to measure pH and PaCO2. And those can be useful to assess ventilation and acid-base balance. So that's an upside, but obviously getting that arterial blood is somewhat invasive and can be painful, so you can't really measure the PaO2 to get moment-to-moment -moment changes. An alternative to PaO2 is arterial oxygen saturation, or SaO2, which measures the percentage of oxygen-binding sites on hemoglobin that are actually occupied by oxygen. And it can be directly measured from a sample of arterial blood, but you don't have to get that sample. You can also measure it with pulse oximetry. And the way that works is pretty complicated, but basically you shine light through the blood, and it turns out that oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin shine light back at different rates. And so by measuring the reflectance, you can determine the percentage of oxygen saturation. Now this is great because it's totally non-invasive, and in most circumstances, it gives you a continuous evaluation of oxygenation. But there are some downsides, which are, number one, that the saturation is actually pretty insensitive to changes in PaO2 values until the PaO2 falls below 60 millimeters of mercury, which usually correlates with about an SaO2 of 90%. And we'll talk soon about why this is. And number two, you can't assess either ventilation or acid-base balance with SaO2 because the pH and PaCO2 are not measured. So a patient could develop significant hypercarbia or acidemia and keep a totally normal SaO2, especially when supplemental oxygen is used and offsets the hypoxemia due to hypoventilation. And a third problem with the SaO2 is that you can get pretty inaccurate pulse oximetry readings in a number of different settings. So one issue is if you have a weak pulse, which can happen with profound hypotension, or if there's a lot of vasoconstriction, because of either hypothermia or underlying vascular disease like scleroderma. There can also be interference by venous pulsations, which can happen in severe heart failure or arrhythmias. And finally, you can get an inaccurate reading if atypical hemoglobin is present. Now, if we know both the PaO2 and the SaO2, then we can calculate the total arterial oxygen content, or CaO2, expressed in milliliters per deciliter. So that means the milliliters of pure oxygen gas that are dissolved in a deciliter of blood. And it's equal to the sum of the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin plus the amount of dissolved oxygen in the blood. And here, HGB is the hemoglobin concentration in grams per deciliter. And this 1.34 signifies that one gram of hemoglobin can bind a maximum of 1.34 milliliters of oxygen. SaO2 represents the proportion of available hemoglobin binding sites that are bound to oxygen, as we said, and it'll be expressed as a decimal between 0 and 1.0. And then PaO2 is measured in millimeters of mercury. Again, note that this second term, the oxygen dissolved within the blood, constitutes a very small fraction of the total content.